Facebook goes shopping, Google cuts the fat, and Intel serves up a fresh batch of chips. I'm Bridget Carey, and this is your CNET Update. Welcome to the premiere episode of CNET Update. Every weekday, I'll give you a breakdown of the biggest stories in tech and how it impacts our lives. We'll touch on new trends, hot devices, and new apps, all in three minutes. If you're watching this on CNET News, you're looking at our new interactive video player. When you want more information on a story, just click the links that come up on the side. It'll pause me, and I'll just wait here patiently until you return. To check out the new player, see all our episodes, and subscribe to the show, visit CNET.com update. So let's get started. The third generation of Intel's core processors are out today, but don't run out and buy a new laptop or desktop just yet. Computers with the new high-end i7 chipsets will be available to order at the end of April at the earliest. The more mainstream price computers with the new Core i5 and Core i3 processors will appear around the end of May. There won't be any special sticker in the store. You'll have to check the model number to see if it's the third generation. The part number begins with a three. You probably won't notice a difference in performance for everyday use. The big improvement, though, is with graphics. Facebook has whipped out its wallet again, this time for patents. Facebook paid $550 million to Microsoft to acquire several hundred patents. These are patents that Microsoft just bought off of AOL a few weeks ago. So now Facebook owns 650 of AOL's patents, and it also snagged 750 of IBM's patents last month. Facebook is going public next month and wants to beef up its patents list, hoping it can also protect them against lawsuits. And in other news we're watching, the Samsung Galaxy Nexus smartphone has landed at Sprint for $200. The positive, it supports Google Wallet. The negative, it'll run on 3G until Sprint's 4G LTE network is ready this summer. That is, if you're in one of the markets with the new 4G network. Skype version 1.0 is now available for Windows phones. The free Skype for Windows app works over Wi-Fi or a 3G network, but for it to work, each person needs to have that Skype app open. This replaces the beta test version that came out in February. And Google has cut back on several programs and services in order to put more focus in other areas. Some of the cuts include an end to support for Google Sync for BlackBerry, the end of Google Talk web app, and the Google Flu vaccine finder. And today's app to watch will come in handy for Android users if your Facebook app crashes off and you can avoid the aggravation and instead use Friendcaster. It's newly remodeled and push notifications will alert you to messages and birthdays, or you could always just use the web version of Facebook too. That's your tech news update for today. From the CNET studios in New York, I'm Bridget Carey.